This is Patrice Wenling reporting for Elsevier Global Medical News at the annual meeting of the Radiological Society of North America with Dr. Timothy Roberts, and he is associated with the Children's Hospital in Philadelphia. Autistic children do have problems in communication and language. And it seems very likely that a difficulty in processing rapid um, auditory sounds and speech um, may lead to downstream difficulties in forming a language representation. Uh, your group used MEG studies uh, to evaluate um, auditory processing. Why is this imaging modality useful uh, for this kind of study? So MEG is a unique technology that allows us to look at brain activity or brain function with both a, a spatial viewpoint and also importantly a temporal viewpoint. That is we can ask the question not just where in the brain is function happening but when is it happening. Um, how might this information be used in treatment planning for children with autism? So we know that the autism spectrum is very broad. Different children have very different manifestations. And we're thinking that by asking the brain for signatures of autism, such as auto processing deficits, as we saw here, that we may be able to subtype uh, into categories of autism that show greater or lesser neural deficits. Um, what needs to be done next? What future steps in order for auditory testing to become part of a workup for autism for this to actually come into practice? Well, there are a number of uh, steps that we take when um, developing a technology um, and taking it from uh, late stage research through clinical translation uh, into clinical studies. I think, of course, this data should be replicated by other groups, and I think we should also see what its predictive value is by uh, seeing if we can scan children at a younger age to see if uh, it has a role as a predictive model.